Thank you, Victor, for inviting me uh, to, this, uh, to this talk. Um, I want to make some disclaimer first. First of all, I'm not an AI expert. Uh, my background is actually in uh, applied mathematics. Um, I'm, a, I'm a, a mathematician, and by accident, I stepped into the world of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and so forth. Right? Uh, I'm actually, I actually run the, the NVIDIA AI uh, tech centers. The, all the experts are not here, and the non-expert is here speaking to you. So bear with me uh, for, for my talk. Now, what I want to talk today about is what we call uh, explain, um, explainable algos, right? Uh, you guys would know that over the last, these are all the fantastic things you hear about. AI achieves superhuman performance. We see uh, the uh, neural networks, uh, convolutional neural networks, uh, has grown to multiple layers from a couple of uh, 10 layers to tens of layers to 100 over layers, and now people are even thinking of thousands of layers. And we have achieved, and there is a lot of announcement about achieving human uh, performance. That actually spun off the amazing uh, achievement in various areas. You will see that there is Go games, uh, people playing domes, people playing uh, paints and Sinzai boys and, and, and so forth. And like what Victor has said, there's a lot of hypes. And the question is that they are also, by the same time, they are also success in, in, in those areas. Of course, needless to say, you sprung up all the different type of uh, companies. Uh, companies like, you know, uh, the AI companies like Baidu, uh, Amazon's, uh, Google's now has one way or another has adopted. Uh, AI in one, one way or another, they have actually put in huge a lot of fundings into it. And I'll talk about too much. Now, one of the things that you will see, and in the next couple of years, in fact, there's just a recent reports coming out, that cameras are everywhere. Well, whether, whether is that AI, artificial intelligence or not, it doesn't really matter. Cameras is going to be there, right? Uh, China itself is going to have a couple of uh, hundred millions of cameras uh, in the next couple of years. You will, you will see that. And then you will see that they are, one way or another, they will have to use some form of artificial intelligence to actually monitor those, uh, those cameras. Now, this is a typical neural network. You guys know this very well, all right? Now, this neural network is nothing new. It's invented uh, in, the, in the 50s. In fact, the first neurons, uh, proposal for neurons was in the 40s. And the neural network came out in the 50s. It doesn't go anywhere until recently that it actually picked up. The reason it's be, it got picked up is because of, of three main things. One of them is that the huge amount of data that's available. The next thing is that computation has become very cheap. Now you can buy, fortunately for us, NVIDIA cards, and you could do your computation on your PCs or so ever. So there is not a problem doing, doing that. But if you look at the neural network itself, it's nothing much but a, a layers and layers of matrix computation. And the whole thing is that this is a universal approximator in one way or another. And from a mathematical sense of view, what's a universal approximator? Basically, it approximates almost, it can approximate almost anything, provided, provided you provide the right data, right, and the right parameters to tune. The problem with this is, is this, is that unless you can have the whole world of data, every single bit of, let's say you use it for images, every single bit of images in the whole damn world, then you can complete the whole space. If not, you only have a subspace of the that, uh, that, that images. That causes bias. Let me just show you why. This is face apps. I think many of you will have seen this. They just apologize for, they are just withdraw the things, and basically because they're building, they, they, they consider the apps as being racist, right? So they have actually pulled up this filter. And the thing was that, they apologize, and the thing was that for building a racist algorithm because that, the explanation is this, is because the data is biased, right? So how do we then solve, go about solving the, the, the biased data? It's almost impossible. We are, maybe we are able from a statistical point of view, for those who have done statistics, like myself, you know that you can, when you do one variables, you can see, you can detect, you, well, you can do some calculation, you can find some bias in it, and you try to emulate it. 
or the data or something like this. If you have two variables, fine. Multivariables get made more complex. And if you have uh, images like this, where it's multivariates, it's going to be very, very complex to do that. This is uh, examples of a algorithms that actually fool the top best algorithms that's available in terms of image recognition. This is a, uh, oops. Oops. Press the wrong button, sorry. This is deep fool. Now, what you see over here is actually that if you use a normal algorithms that you will, you will see, the best algorithm, you will recognize as a wheels, not a problem. The moment, by generating certain noise on the images, just putting in the images, for a human eye, it's almost impossible to detect that. And you, you know, both of them will detect that it is a turtle. The algorithms detect that it is a turtle, right? So you use a VGG, you use LX, uh, uh, LeanNet or whatsoever, these algorithms. Uh, and what you have is that if you can put a bit, right, for a different network, all you need is to put a bit different type of noise. Totally, you destroy the entire algorithms. And this is what will happen. This is detected as a woo. This is detected as an Indian elephant, <laughs> and so forth. <laughs> so basically, it is not just the data that you feed to the network that is biased. We know that it's already biased. But even the, 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 the inference engine, when you use it as an inference, that can actually bias the inference engine. So that is a pretty much very, very challenging problem. So how do we go about doing that? Well, one of the tasks is that today, what you see in, in many of neural networks is that machine learning algorithm is that you train your data, you machine learning, you learn the function, and then you come to here, and almost like a black box. Almost, right? And most of us would then ask the question, no, why did it do that? Most of us wouldn't know. It just did that. We know it works. 98% of it or 99% of it. Why not something else? We have no idea, right? And so forth. So all these questions asked, you are not able to answer from the algorithms. What we want to do for explanation, explainable uh, artificial intelligence is that we are able to explain the model. We know that the, the, the data is definitely biased. When we create the algorithms, when we choose the parameters, it's definitely biased. But its bias is OK, as long as we know that it is biased. We must be able to understand it. Right. So an explainable model, at the moment right now, if you look at all these things, if you look at all the different type of algorithms, the prediction is, uh, for example, like deep learning, prediction is very high. Fantastic result. Explain it, no one hell knows what's going on. No, very, very difficult to explain it. Even you're using statistical methods, uh, uh, all the uh, different ways, it's very, very difficult to actually explain that, right? What we want to do is that, no, things will be like, what you want to do is that able to explain a deep neural network. So one of the things that you can actually visualize it, right? For different layers, you can actually start to visualize at each layer itself, what does, what does it really do? Again, this is pretty challenging not an easy task to do. But what we could do also that we're able to interpret the models. How do we then able to understand what the model is? And lastly but not least is a model induction, right? If we can have another machine learning things to actually explain what the black box actually is doing, that would be an ideal thing. So one of the things that many of you will have know about Go Games, and Go Games is, is basically this, Nothing much but just a reinforcement learning with multi tree. One of the challenging things, in fact, for even for the inventors itself, is to explain why Go Game make those moves. As you guys would know, in, in I think it was a game number three, Go Game make a fantastic move that no grandmaster actually understood it. But it was after some time they actually managed to understand that that was the best move ever, ever made by anyone, human or machine. But why did they move it? Why did they move that, make the steps? Actually, it's very difficult to understand. So one of the things is that this is what we call an adaptive explanation to justify the decisions and also pointing to the evidence. 
So instead of trying to find that, to, to find that whether the, the data is biased or the model is biased or trying to move that upon, what they try to do is to build uh, things that able the algorithm to explain why it making that decision, right? So this is, so for those people who are interested, go to read this paper, it's by uh, in, uh, Berkeley. And what they do is that this is the thing. This is a picture that is a man is on the snowboard on the ramp. So when, they are, when you ask a question, why, what is the person doing? You will understand it's snowboarding, right? Now, in traditionally, if you do not have this, uh, when, when in the previous uh, way of doing it, just using a deep learning convolutional network, you will say that it's snowboarding. But with the VQA, it's it able to explain why is it that the machine is thinking that it's snowboarding by because there are a snowboard, a snowboarding outfit. The guy is actually on a snowboard in a snowboarding outfit. That's why the algorithms think that the man is doing snowboarding. So this is the, the, the things that one of the things that people are trying to do. So with that, with a limited amount of time, I'm going to end my presentation. Thank you very much.